Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Chromaticraft tutorial series. Uh, we're in a different world now, uh, as you can see, because something's going on with the other world, at least for me. Um, I went exploring to try and find one of the new uh, world gen structures. I explored thousands and, and thousands of blocks and hundreds and I don't know how many chunks. But in the end, my world stopped generating chunks, and so I'm stuck. Uh, 3,000 blocks away from the base. The world is slow and every time I try and quit it, it uh, crashes. So we're here in a new world. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Apparently it's not happening for Shiva. Um, hopefully we can get that world back, but I explored a lot of distance and still didn't find the uh, structure I'm looking for. Anyway, in this episode we're going to take a look at a couple of cool things. Um, so it may be a bit of a shorter episode, but uh, shorter episodes are probably what I'm going to have to be doing on you know, just because I have limited time to record. So, uh, the first thing we're going to take a look at is called the Subterranean Route Finder. It does exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it'll help you... You'll never get lost in a cave again if you have this. Alright? So, it's crafted in a casting table with a stick, two nether quartz, a redstone dust, an emerald, two aura dusts, and two transmissive dusts. And if you forget... Uh, you forgot where you get those. The aura dust. Wait, where is it? The aura dust comes from those uh, aura blooms. These things. And the transmissive dust comes from the uh, radiance bushes, which you find mostly in deserts. All right, we'll give this a whack. Doesn't take any runes in your casting room. Grab the subterranean route finder, and now we need to go underground. So I went over here. There was a hungry aura note here that dug that out. I got rid of it so it wouldn't eat my terrain. So if we go down into this cave, I don't think this cave is all that deep. But we're going to go down into the cave as far as we can. I have uh, night vision, by the way. And then we'll just right click with this. So what it's doing is it path finds the nearest way path to a um, to the surface and then it shows you that path with these awesome little particles so all you have to do is follow these particles and they will lead you back to the surface it sort of ended right here where there is in fact the hole to the surface Right? Now, if you didn't have a vertical hole like that, it probably wouldn't have stopped right there. It probably would have kept going. But this will allow you to uh, find your way out of caves if you get hopelessly lost. Which is pretty cool, I must, I must say. And, like, if we, like, go down further... And right-click, you can see that now it's different colors. Okay, so the further you are from the surface, it, it, the, the colors change, and then they become bluer uh, as you get up towards the top. Now, it does look like our original path is still there. I actually don't know how to get rid of these. I guess you just break them. But you can just leave them here. Oh. Yeah, I don't know how you get rid of these. Oh, I can right-click it with a manipulator. Interesting. That looks like it gets rid of the whole path. So then this will also lead me to the top. So let's go ahead and just... Where is it? Right click on that with an element of manipulator. I actually just right click on it. You probably don't need to manipulate it. I just right clicked on it and now it went away. So you can leave the trail there. Um, which could be quite useful. So actually this is the subterranean route finder. It's pretty straightforward but extremely useful. So. I know a lot of people like to find, you know, they have different ways of making sure they don't get lost in a cave. Water lover is a favor, uh, favors the uh, torches on the right method where you always put your torches on the right. But if you don't care or if you don't want to do all that crap, you make yourself one of these. And then you'll never get lost. I'm just looking around a little bit at the terrain. See if there's anything interesting around here. we got like a meteor crash site right there. That's about it. Little village. It's like two built three buildings nothing that special this area over here looks kind of neat anyway that's the subterranean route finder 
So uh, if you have a penchant for getting lost in caves like I do, then this is definitely the tool for you. It's not that expensive, although it does require an emerald, but if you find a village, you can probably find somebody who will uh, have a decent trade so you can get your hands on one. And then it's pretty cheap, actually. It does require nether quartz, so unless you can trade with a villager, you will have to go to the nether. But you can usually uh, get your hands on nether quartz pretty darn easy, so it is pretty cool. I like it a lot, and um, I think you'll get a lot of use out of it. Okay, so that's the subterranean route finder. Now we're going to take a look at a weapon, a very interesting weapon, these uh, Bezier Crystals. So in order to craft these, we have to place uh, an iron ingot in the middle, let's just go ahead and do that. So iron ingot in the middle, then Tahara shards, I thought I had four of these. I swear I had four of those. Tahara shards, a Rizova shard in the bottom left, Nilla shard in the upper right. Wait, it's not a Nilla shard, is it? It is. It's a Nilla crystal shard. Oh yeah, of course. This one actually requires rune, so we can't uh, see it in the casting table yet. One, two, three blocks um, diagonally down to the left, and then one block to the left of that. We need to place a Resolva. So one, two, three, and then one over. Place the Resolva right there. <laughs> there we go. Busy your crystals. <laughs> we'll wax this. Bezier crystals. I already had one, but whatever. So we'll go back downstairs. Downstairs. Underground. <laughs> downstairs. With uh, where the mobs are. And we'll see how this thing works. Alright. Let me find a couple of enemies. If I can't find them, I'll spawn them in. I want like multiple enemies next to each other, because that's how we're going to show it off. We can also kill some animals up top, but there's some mobs here. So the Bezier Crystals is a weapon that will chain through enemies. And make an awesome sound effect while it does it. Taking a bit to kill him. I'm not exactly sure how the mechanics work. As to whether it's better to click or hold it down or whatever, but... Holding it down definitely seems to be the better way to go. So it chains between enemies at a certain range. I don't know what that range is. Every once in a while it seems to quit dealing damage, but it only does that sometimes. I really have no idea what the mechanics of this thing are. Except that it chains between enemies. Each hit deals about two and a half hearts, it appears. Uh, we'll go upstairs. I'll, I'll find like a herd of animals that we can slaughter with this thing. It's very calming, the sound effect. I, 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 I enjoy the sound effect. Okay. So let's find us like a herd of animals. I don't want to do it near the, the, the village because I don't want to risk chaining it to the villagers and killing them. I expected there to be more animals around here. Here's some pigs. So, if we hit him with this... It's very interesting. It's a very musical way to kill things. But there you go. Bezier crystals. Pretty cheap. And uh, it definitely does the job. It's not going to be like, you know, it's not a crazy, super powerful, one-hits-everything weapon. But then it wouldn't be, would it? It's not particularly expensive. And, uh... So it's not going to be like a one-shot, but you see it does about... It does about three hearts to these pigs. I think it depends on the armor rating. I'm not really sure. It seemed to do two and a half to the, uh... Or maybe it was doing three and I just miscounted it as two and a half. But anyway, um, that's the Bezier Crystals. It's a weapon. It uh, just takes a couple of shards. Specifically colored ones though. So you gotta find some four Taharas, so four white ones, you gotta find one pink one, and you gotta find one blue one. And you can make it. It's once you have a casting table with a casting room and a little Rizova Crystal Rune here. So cheap, 
doesn't take that much to cut to craft it and it does a good job let's read the um we'll, we'll, we'll just quickly before we end the episode we'll we'll read the book entries on both of these so the route finder uh it talks about message you know ways to process stuff acquisition of ores branch mining is boring cave mining you know tendency to get lost this thing gets you out basically it Bezier crystals, clusters of enemies. Um, yeah, when you've only got basic weapons, a group of enemies can be annoying. An attack that can bridge the gap and jump between mobs, attacking them in rapid succession. Um, although, for some reason, you keep getting asked if you need to whistle to use it. I don't get that. Oh, wait. No, are, are, uh, is that a reference to Guardians of the Galaxy and that, that dude who's got the arrow that he controls that flies around? Uh, between all the enemies. Is that is that what that is? What the heck is that chaining to? Oh, you can just fire it out at nothing? Oh no, it's attacking a wisp. This thing's got quite the range on it. I love how it plays music. Die, you. Or will it not kill that? I have no idea. Anyway, that's it. That's that's it for this. These are two very straightforward tools that are nevertheless extremely useful. I'm hoping that um, we can get my other world back and up and running, or I can uh, keep making worlds and exploring them to try and find that world gen. I'm, I'm trying to find a specific world gen object, but it's supposed to be extremely rare, and uh, after exploring thousands and thousands of, of meters of distance, uh, yeah, they got that right. Uh, extremely rare and I haven't been able to find it yet. Man, look at the range on this. I don't know if it's dealing any damage at this range, but look at that. Some good range. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I know that uh, this video is coming out um, a day late. That's because of the world problems. It took me a little while to get this world set up, get my progression back to max. So that's why the days are swapped. So it shouldn't make that much of a difference uh, to you guys. You got both of the contents. Uh, for some reason, YouTube isn't letting me upload my thumbnails. It's really annoying. But until that uh, fixes itself, unfortunately, I've got all the thumbnails made, but it won't let me upload them. If anyone has encountered a similar problem where it just says uploading thumbnail forever, let me know because it's getting really, really annoying. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for future episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Join our Discord if you're interested. Like and comment the video down below if you did enjoy it. It helps me out a lot. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out. Bye.